Okay, so today's video is part one of two parts on this subject. We're gonna be talking about some really hated tropes, specifically, I hate them. So I hopped on my Discord and I asked um, I asked people, what are some tropes that you hate and specifically tropes that you associate with me hating? And mostly we just ended up having a really fun conversation out of it, but also I, I have a video now, two videos in fact. So the first one's just gonna be mostly a fun, it's just gonna be a fun video where we're going to tier rank my most hated tropes and um, make fun of them for a while. And then my next video is going to be me taking these tropes and showing you examples of them being done well because any trope, any overused um, tool in writing can be done well. Well, no, actually that's not true. Some of them can't be done well. We'll talk about that. But almost every single trope can be done well. And some of my most hated tropes are done wonderfully in some of my favorite books. So this is just a fun video talking about some of my least favorite tropes. And then the next video is going to be uh, showing you some instances where they're done well. She just said that. Oh, I guess I guess I need to talk about these about these tiers. So the uh, the the tiers that we're that we're working with today are all negative because these are my least favorite tropes. Something won't ruin a book. It grinds my gears. Really don't like it. Get out. Just leave the room. We don't want you here. Then incoming rant. <laughs> if it shows up, I'm gonna point it out and I'm gonna be irritated about it. I'm probably gonna rant about it. And then the last one, die a slow death. I never wanna see it again. It cannot be done well. Just kill it. So I, I could just grab some images to represent what we're talking about here. And the first one that is randomly thrown into this tear maker thingy is insta-love. This is one that a lot of people hate, so uh, I don't feel bad about hating it. Um, in my opinion, it's just it's just lazy. I mean, it's not that hard to add a few scenes here and there where people have chemistry and make a solid connection before they're ready to throw their lives away for each other and are, are meant for each other um, and proclaiming love for each other on their third meeting. And there's nothing wrong with instant attraction. That is totally reasonable and realistic, but we're soulmates, I would give my life for you is a bit much after knowing each other a week. It's mostly annoying to me because I can't get on board with two people falling in love if I don't get to watch them fall in love. Now don't get me wrong, it's okay for two characters to already be in love when the book starts. I'm fine with that. You can create chemistry after they're together perfectly fine. But if I'm there for their meeting and I'm there for the first I love you and they take place two seconds apart, I'm not gonna be happy about it. I'm never gonna end up rooting for these characters, even if I like these characters individually. I will never care about their relationship if if it's if it's if it's rushed and sloppy and lazy. It grinds my gears. It's not gonna ruin the book for me, but it will ruin the relationship for me, which is why I'm putting it a uh, tier below won't ruin the book. And it will put a sour taste in my mouth, especially if the insta-love isn't just some side thing that happens that really is irrelevant, but it's actually important to the story. It's important, like it's the main characters that this is happening to, and it's a significant side plot. It, I, it'll mess up the side plot. It will, it'll ruin the side plot. It may not ruin the whole book, unless it's a romance book, then of course it will, but it grinds my gears. Next one is stupid mistakes. Characters that are supposed to be intelligent are supposed to be good at their job or good at whatever it is that they're doing poorly at the moment. And they just, it's okay to make your characters make stupid mistakes, but I'm talking about you're, you're, you're an idiot right now. Like it doesn't make sense for the character doesn't make sense for their experience. It's just to drive forward the plot. It's nothing but a plot device. <sighs> I'm putting this one in won't ruin the book because it won't ruin the book for me, but if you do it too many times, then it will. Next is love triangles. Okay, love triangles. Have we seen it done well? Almost never. <laughs> And I think a big reason why it's almost never done well is because it's almost always 
blatantly obvious who the author wants you to like. So we know who Endgame is from the start, so it's just needless drama. It doesn't even add layers to the story, it's just needless drama. I do have examples of it done well, but they, they, they are rare. It's not enough for the amount of times that I see it done. I'm just gonna kick, I'm gonna kick love triangles out of the room. Thankfully, they're not as common anymore as they used to be, but they still exist and they're never, like almost never executed well. So I'm just gonna kick them out of the room. We'll, 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 we'll leave them out there. Next one is the chosen one. So this is a trope that some people really enjoy and some people don't like at all. I've really never been a fan of the chosen one trope. Some of my favorite books have the chosen one trope. So they're, it's definitely not gonna ruin the story for me. Spoilers for where I'm putting it. But I also don't like it and I don't need it. It's not, it's not a buzzword for me. If you tell me something is chosen one, I'm more likely to not pick it up because it's a trope that I personally don't care for, but also, it can be done well, it can be done very well, and uh, I'm fine with it, I just don't really like it that much. Here we go, here we go. Okay, now we're getting down to the good ones. So this one is, <sighs> I honestly don't even wanna put it in here because I don't wanna deal with the dude bros that are gonna be in my comments, but hey, let's do it. The trope of the woman or this has happened this has happened to men too it's just a lot more common for female characters the woman who uh, has to be raped in order for her character development to happen her character development is so tied up in that rape that um, the readers are convinced that if she weren't raped she wouldn't have she wouldn't she wouldn't have this tremendous character growth and therefore somehow subconsciously convincing the readers that the rape was good for the character ooh she hates to see it. And you know, it's so common, especially in adult fantasy. It's not, I, adult fantasy is one of my favorite genres of all time. I love it so much, but oh my goodness, does it come up so often? And whew, the way some people vehemently will defend it. And in my opinion, it can't be done well. It can't be done well. I don't know why it's used so often. Put a sword in a man's hand, and he's, and he's great, he's off to the races, he's got his development. And yet, in some books, a woman can't seem to find her development apart from sexual assault. And I don't know why! In some books, it'll just happen over and over again to every female character in the book. We love to see it. Actually, no, we don't. Let's kill it. Let's let it die a slow death. Let's never see it again. This has gotta be my least favorite trope. I, I don't think anything, I don't think anything makes me ruins a book like this does. The amount of trauma that actually comes from sexual assault, you cannot convince me that it's good for a character. On a lighter topic, the next one is miscommunication. Two characters don't really have much conflict in their story, so let's just make them bad at talking. Let's make them bad at humaning, in fact. If the whole conflict can be solved with a single conversation, and in fact an easy conversation to have, and it isn't, and we could have cut 200 pages if we would have had that conversation 200 pages earlier. Ooh, ooh, get out. We're kicking it out of the room. I don't wanna see it. It's so frustrating because it's so simple and, and we notice it, you know? Like we readers, we see it and we hate it so much. I don't think I've ever actually talked to someone that said, oh man, I love the miscommunication trope. It's one that we deal with because it comes up so often, but it's like, it's such a lazy point of conflict and really frustrating to read. Okay, <laughs> the next one is another one of my probably top favorite, least favorite tropes, and that is, when the dust settles and the battle's over, the main battle, the one that we've been building up to throughout the whole book or the whole series, everybody's still alive. This is more of a sci-fi fantasy trope. Um, it doesn't really apply to, it could apply to a thriller or it, it, could, it could apply to a lot, but it doesn't apply to every genre. Uh, if the whole book or series has led up to one big battle, one big moment, and it ends with that one side character that no one actually cared about, that we all saw that death coming because it's obvious that the character was only introduced so that they could die so that that character doesn't have to die because we actually like that character. Incoming rant. I will always, <laughs> I will always be irritated by this. And I'm not saying that authors should kill off characters for the sake of killing off characters. It's just, 
It's just, I'm not gonna be convinced that you defeated the enemy and all of the enemy's soldiers or whatever situation we're in, and none of our main crew has any sort of long-term consequences, like death, or at least some sort of intense injury that means that they can't do X that's very important to them. I can't be convinced that you slayed hundreds, but no one on our side died except for the ones that we don't actually care about. Also, I just want some consequences to major things, you know, something big that will impact thousands or millions or more people. Something that is going to impact so many people in the world, I can't be convinced that at the end of it, no one is truly affected on the side that won. The world is all rainbows and sunshines now. Everything is fine. Everybody's happy. The grass grows again. The sun comes out and everybody walks home arms on each other's shoulders, smiling with no PTSD. There was a rant just there. <laughs> All right, I'm actually gonna skip the next one and follow this one up with um, the resurrection trope. Now, again, I think that all, almost all of these tropes can be done well. So resurrection doesn't have to be the worst thing ever, but it is. <laughs> almost every time it's used, it is. And I want this on the heels of everyone comes out alive because one thing that I've noticed <sighs> that I hate is when we're in that final battle and we kill off someone that we care about and the readers mourn and we're hurting and I'm crying and then I turn the page. Cannot, cannot tell you how, <laughs> how much that irritates me. Because it's hollow emotions. I've been cheated out of my tears. The author wanted me to feel something but couldn't commit, so they killed off my fave, made me cry, and then said, just kidding, I'm not brave enough to do this. So, haha, -ha, you felt it, it counts. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Incoming rant. I don't know. So resurrection can be done well. So I'm not gonna put it in die a slow death, but what I just described, <laughs> that's not it done well. All right, now we'll jump back to the cute little puppy. So this is talking animals. Uh, this is a trope that is objectively fine. I just, for whatever reason, don't like it. It's not even something that I feel justified about not liking. It's not even one of those things where it's like, okay, you can you can respect that I don't like this, right? No, you probably can't respect that I don't like this because it's irrational. Why does this bother me so much? I I don't I don't know. I want to put it in won't ruin the book because it's such an illogical irritant of mine, but it has ruined books for me, especially if the whole cast is animals. I can't do it. I don't know why. So I'm just gonna put it in grinds by gears, even though I don't think that's fair because it doesn't, it's not so much an irritant as it is just, I can't do it. I just don't like it. I don't know why. I just, it doesn't make sense. Okay, next is flashback, which I mostly put this in because it kept coming up on the Discord when I asked for people's recommendations and because it can be really overused and it can be done really, really poorly, but it's actually not one that bothers me that much. So I'm just gonna chuck it in, won't ruin the book because I know that it won't for me. It can be done really poorly, but even when it's not executed, well, I generally don't mind that much. I just get bored in the flashbacks and I'm like, this really isn't necessary. We don't need this. You could have incorporated it another way, but it's not, it's just, it's not gonna bother me that much. Um, I mostly put it in this video so that I could include it in the next one because <laughs> I have examples of it done so well. So we'll just move forward. Okay, this image doesn't represent the trope well at all, but I couldn't think of what would work. So this trope is, um, the one, the one where it's all talk and no action. And this is really more of a writing flaw and less of a, this is overused and people are tired of it flaw. The author really wants to convince me that this character is a force to be reckoned with. They can, they can look at a room and we'll have a long monologue about all the ways that they could kill everyone in this room, all the ways that they could best everybody and make it out alive in the end. They're not gonna do it, but they'll think about it really hard over and over again throughout the whole book. 
or it can be done with friendships too. Like just really nail in to the reader through your narrative that this person is a great friend or an excellent love interest, but you're never actually gonna show me, you're just gonna really tell me a lot. I will never be convinced by that. <laughs> Again, it's more of a writing flaw than it is, but it's something that comes up so often and it's something that multiple people on the Discord brought up and I think that it's worth acknowledging as something that <sighs> it'll ruin whatever it is that the author is trying to get across to me. Whatever it is that the author is trying to tell me this character is, if you only tell me and never show me, it'll, it'll make it worse than not even including it. So I'm just gonna put it, oh, I'm just gonna kick it out of the room. It's annoying, but I don't know, would I rant about it? If I reviewed this book, would it get a dedicated rant section of the video? I think it would. Yeah, we're gonna put it in incoming rant. Really, it should probably be put in die a slow death because I don't think this can be done well, right? Just telling me constantly that a character is something but never showing me, I don't think that can be done well, but that, that column is reserved for a certain something, a certain, a certain trope that we've already discussed. The last one on this list is romanticized or justified cheating. This is one that I have ranted about so many times and it's in all of my least favorite books. All of the books that I have dedicated rants for that my subscribers expect me to talk about when I talk about my least favorite books of all times, of all time, it is always a book that has romanticized or justified cheating in it or just a, abusive relationships that are romanticized. Man, I just, I hate unhealthy relationships. Anyway, moving forward. Either the current person that they're in a relationship with is a jerk or is, I don't know, just not the protagonist. Whatever the reason is, it's justified and it's fine. In fact, this relationship where active cheating is happening is cute and sweet and we root for them. And there's, there's always a reason. In one book particular, there's not even a reason other than just she's dating the guy that the main character wants. It's fine, everything's fine. I, I despise cheating. Like, just break up with them. I get it, I get it. You wanna make out with that person over there. Just break up with the person that you're currently with. It's really not complicated. If you don't like them anymore, or you don't like them as much as the person that you're trying to jump the bones of right now, break up with this one first. It's not hard, it's not hard, it's, I, I, incoming rant. Okay. I don't know if this was fun for you guys. It was pretty fun for me. I feel like I let out some steam. These are some of my least favorite tropes of all time. Some of the ones that I talk about a lot. And this is me ranking them. Now you know in what order I hate them the most. Next, we're going to talk about ways that these are done well. Almost all of them. We're gonna talk about ways in which I've seen this done and I've actually genuinely liked it. I'm gonna give you book examples so you can read it done well, at least in my opinion, and we'll be able to talk about that. Until then, in this comments, be sure to uh, hop down to the comments and let me know, are there some of these that you also hate on the same level as me? Are there some that you actually like? And give me examples of how you've seen them done well. And, uh, and then if there's any that I'm leaving off the list that you really, really hate that I didn't talk about. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for hanging out with me for this ranty video. Uh, I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.